Hello, it's me again, it's Grud Salt Monkey. How are you? How are you doing? It's time for another Letter to Sports video, and this time it's for the letter P. As you should already know by now, we're looking at the Paralympics, since on the last video for O, we focused on the Olympics, and then I said we would do this next time. As ever, the first thing we have to do is look at the flag. So, let's zoom in on the flag, shall we? Zoom in on the flag, zoom, 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 zoom. Here we are, this is the current version of the Paralympic flag, first used in 2008, though it briefly appeared in the closing ceremony of 2004 during the handover to the next hosts. It contains three crescent shapes called Ajitos, they are in red, blue and green, and they all meet at a central point to represent the idea of the Paralympics bringing athletes together. There have been a few variations of this logo previously, with an earlier version being similar to the five Olympic rings. However, the International Olympic Committee argued that it was too similar, so they decided to change it. They changed it to kind of help with their own identity and things, which was a very good idea, I think. So what are the Paralympics? Well, imagine a sporting event much like the Olympics, where all of the athletes involved have some form of disability. These can range from physical impairments, such as amputations, um, sensory impairments like blindness or deafness and intellectual impairments such as neurogenetic disorders. The aim of the Paralympics is to allow those who would otherwise struggle against non-disabled athletes to compete on a more even playing field. The name Paralympics originally comes from the combination of the word Olympics, obviously, with the term paraplegia as forerunners to the event were intended for people with spinal injuries. As further disability groups were introduced into the games, the meaning was expanded upon, and the current explanation is derived from the Greek term para, meaning alongside, as the competition is now held in parallel with the Olympics. Given the wide variety of disabilities now represented at the games, and to help ensure a fairer competition, there are several classifications within each category. For example... Vision impairment might be represented as partial blindness in one or both eyes, and then complete blindness in one or both eyes, and so on. In total, there are currently 22 sports in the Summer Paralympics, with each offering at least one eligible classification. Whilst the majority of these sports also feature in the Olympics, there are two sports that have no Olympic equivalent. The first is boccia, which is a precision ball sport, kind of similar to the French game of patank or balls, um, where players aim to throw leather balls as close as they can to a white target ball called a jack. The other is goal ball, which is played by teams of athletes with visual impairments and involves throwing a ball across a court into the opponent's goal area. I would say it's a bit like if volleyball and basketball and maybe some handball were all combined into one great big mega sport. Of course, I couldn't do a video on the Paralympics without also briefly mentioning wheelchair rugby. If you've ever seen this, it's amazing. Uh, it's a fast and furious version of the regular sport that also has the nickname of murder ball because it's uh, full contact and occasionally aggressive natured. Okay, that's pretty much all I have for you today on the Paralympics. The next Paralympic Games, by the way, will be held in Paris in August 2024, so in a couple of years. Uh, I hope you get to watch some of the events. Um, I will be back way before then, of course, um, with another Letter to Sports video featuring the letter Q. Okay, bye!